Have you ever lost something really important? I mean something irreplaceable. What links did you go to to find it, and what would you have paid to get it back? Maybe you feel lost. I don't mean in a foreign city or country. I mean separated from God. You don't know how you got where you are, except you can see the mistakes that led you there, and you're filled with regret. All you want to know is, can you come home? Jesus teaches three parables in Luke chapter 15 about how God redeems the lost. These are not just feel-good stories that remind us how much God loves us. They have deep Bible truths that each of us needs to consider on a daily basis. So grab your coffee and let's dive in. This book will change your life. You just got to read it. Hey everyone and welcome to this video on Luke chapter 15 and the first two parables we find in that chapter, the parable of the lost sheep and the lost coin. We're going to talk about their meanings. We're going to talk about how it needs to change our reflection on the world around us and how it ought to inform our relationship with God. And we need to dive right in with the first of these parables, which begins in verse 3 of Luke 15. Interestingly enough, this is not the only place that Jesus teaches this parable of the lost sheep. He teaches it on a totally different occasion in Matthew 18, where he's warning the disciples that their attitude about being the greatest in the kingdom could become a stumbling block, and it was against his purpose of coming to seek and save that which was lost. But having said that, in Luke's account, it's a different group group of people that Jesus is having difficulty with. It's the scribes and the Pharisees. And the text begins this way. All the tax collectors and sinners were coming near him to listen to him. Both the Pharisees and the scribes began to grumble, saying, this man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable, saying, what man among you, if he has a hundred sheep and has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety and nine in the open pasture and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I tell you that in the same way, there will, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. It's obvious from the context here that the 99 righteous persons who need no repentance is talking about the self-righteousness of the Pharisees. But as we're looking at this, I want to stop and think about the setup for just a moment. Jesus is being attacked because sinners and tax collectors are coming to listen to him teach about the kingdom. In the minds of the Pharisees, the great teachers of the people, that was below the level of a rabbi, that the rabble should not have been coming to him, that the message of the kingdom was really meant for those that were the deep thinkers, the really good people and they are attacking Jesus's character for this. Interestingly enough, many people today use this example of Jesus uh, receiving the sinners to himself and perhaps eating with them to stress how Jesus would endorse their sin, which is quite the opposite of what he actually does. In fact, he talks about their need for repentance. That's the point of the two parables. But what we see is they are attacking Jesus, and what he tells them is, look, isn't this obvious that this is the work that you should be doing? If you had a hundred sheep and you lost one, are you going to just let it die in the wilderness? Are you going to leave the 90 and nine in the pasture in a place where there's relative safety and go and find the one who is lost? He says, doesn't that just make sense? Isn't that what you would do? Well, of course, by their actions, that's not what they were doing. But what he's trying to get them to see is that their attitude toward the sinner is the direct opposite of God's attitude, who's rejoicing when one of these sinners comes and hears the message of the kingdom and and repents and turns to God. So what are we supposed to learn from this first parable? Well, in this parable, the shepherd represents God. He's been the good shepherd since the 23rd Psalm. Jesus uses that same imagery over in John chapter 10 to talk about the good shepherd there, how he lays down his life for the sheep. This story illustrates the links that God is willing to go to to seek and rescue the lost. And of course, that's best illustrated in Jesus on the cross, willingly dying for our sins according to his father's will. Now, the second parable that we run into here is the parable of the lost coin. Now, both of these are setups for the parable of the prodigal son that we're going to do on Thursday. So be sure to hit that subscribe and that notification bell. Leave a comment. Tell me what, what parable you'd like me to do next. But be sure to hit that notification bell so that you don't miss that episode. I know a lot of you love that parable, and I've got some special things for you that are coming in that episode. But this second, this second uh, parable that he tells in this chapter is 
it, it's about a woman who loses a coin, and it's very similar to the parable of the lost sheep. It says, or what woman, if she has 10 silver coins and loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin which I had lost. In the same way, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of angels of God over one sinner who repents. And so, again, you see there is joy over this. So what's the takeaway? away from both of these parables. Well, again, we see that the coin is separated from the woman, just like the sinner is separated from God. God is seeking. Those who are part of God's family are rejoicing over the finding. So the parable of the lost sheep and the lost coin are both powerful reminders of just how much God loves the sinners. As Peter would say in 2 Peter 3, he's not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. It's not a limited call to atonement. God is encouraging all, whosoever will, to come. But we all need to reflect on our relationship relationship with him. We also need to reflect on our relationship with those who are outside of the kingdom of God. Are we treating them as enemies who can't possibly understand the kingdom message, or are we drawing them near so that they can hear a message that God loves them and wants them to repent and come to him? Far too often we get tangled up in these kind of culture wars where we treat others adversarially rather than really doing the work of the kingdom. So if you have ever felt lost or separated from God, how did you find your way back to him? Wasn't it through the message of the kingdom? Well, those are the three things that we need to think about. What are our attitudes toward the sinners? What are our efforts? Do they match God's efforts to redeem the lost? And do we are we looking for the joyful repentance of those who will hear the message and come to him? Well, that's about seven minutes. Hopefully your coffee is still piping hot. Again, leave me a comment. Tell me what parable you want me to do next. And I'm going to put a link right over here to the playlist on the seven minute parables. I got a lot more long form videos coming too, but they're going to be a couple of days away yet, but be looking for the parable of the prodigal to drop on Thursday. And as always, have a good day and God bless.